just adjusting Adam's volume control. Maybe Adam could test his microphone. It's Candle. Candle, edge of the box, drives the ball forward, and it's a low save for Billy Johnson. Brilliant. And you're signalling what? For the players to press further up the pitch? And there's a ball for Lee Martin in the inside right position. He leaves it to Adebayo Rowley. Now Lee Martin takes over. Back to Tanner. To Martin, he's in the box. Six yard area. Martin is saved by the feet of the goalkeeper. And Lee Martin with the first clear cut chance of the game. But the, the way that Epsley cut them apart to make the chance was uh, pretty impressive. Here comes the corner. Oh, and it's saved on the line. It's blocked on the line. Oh my goodness, that was a chance for Braintree. Here we go. Now here comes Paxman breaking for Epsley. Can he get it out to Lee Martin on the right wing? Yes, he can. Here goes Martin. He's in the area. Martin takes it past the fullback, shoots, and the goalkeeper saves, turns the ball away to Bingham. Bingham turns, faces the goal. Bingham shoots, it's blocked, and the ball comes back out to Paxman. Paxman. Candle. The goal scorer on Saturday. Lee Martin out wide on the left to Candle. Candle takes it to the line. The goalkeeper comes and on his knees crawls to save. Martin on the run. Leaves the ball to go to Adebayo Rowling who's going to scramble along to get it into the area. Oh, Bingham was arriving just too late. Candle can't cut it back and it's going to be carried out by Akinwandi. Paxman with brilliant ball to Adebayo Rowling on the right hand side. The fullback's in the area. The ball pinging about, but uh, in the end, it was a defensive clearance by a penal. Corey Davidson that clears downfield. Paxman. It's a Hal Mary pass to Tanner on the edge of the box. Tanner inside to Bingham. Bingham volley. Oh, and it comes off the defender. It, no, in fact, it didn't come off the defender. It's gone for a goal kick. Johnson brings the ball out. Plays it up to uh, Tom Derry. Paxman again. Johnson robs him and here comes Duck Corey Davidson the substitute he's got John Batty with him oh it's a good ball across the box and that was inches away from being converted and it runs away from Lee Martin oh, a good ball forward by Derry gives Akinwandi something to chase he keeps it in on the far side Joe Martin's with him he's got Davidson coming up at speed and Derry but a good save by Haig at the near post I mean, we've seen um, a few sleight of hand tricks, but we've not seen the big uh, illusion. Yes. Now, there's a ball and a half for Adebayo Rowling. Slides it across into the six yard area and it's defended by a penal for a corner. Okay, again, from the, from the vicinity of the edge of the D, the 18 yard box, to the and edge of the D. Of the and the referee has added a minimum of seven minutes to the end of this first half, and that just supports what Adam was saying that the referee was uh, noting the amount of time being used up by the visitors but as Adam said that doesn't account for the, the break in the flow of uh, the Ebsley play. Derry the scorer of the Green Tree goal against Dulwich when they lost 2-1 on Saturday. And the ball's there oh, and it was close it was Haig putting off Akinwandi at the final moment when it was played into him away from him Johnson gets it out to Akinwandi Akinwandi going like a train down that right hand side keeps possession he's cutting in he gets past Caraman and what a miss Tom Derry it's in the car park Tanner running into traffic but uses Candle on the left hand side Akinwandi's getting back to track him oh and Candle gives the ball away cheaply it's picked up by Presnicki And that is the end of the first half. Uh, they go in with the scoreline goal list. And uh, when you come back in about 15 minutes, we'll have a chat with Adam about what he thought of that first half. But uh, for now, thanks for joining us. We'll be back here. There are going to be uh, a couple of changes for the fleet at half time. And the two players coming on are going to be Alfie Egan and uh, Ben Chapman. But we're not quite certain who's gone off yet. And they have cre created a couple of chances. And away we go for the second half. Ebsley attacking the Swanscombe end. Not as they would prefer, but uh, it worked against Hampton and Richmond, but then again they were 2-0 up at half-time, so everybody 
back apart from Derry for the visitors. Here's Lee Martin, left hand side of the area. Martin back to Mon Louis, Mon Louis to Joe Martin. Joe Martin to Mon Louis, Mon Louis curls a ball just over the bar. The first effort of the second half. And Mon Louis goes down the inside left channel. Can he keep it in? I think it's going to be too strong. Yes, he does keep it in, but there's nobody coming in on the far side, and it's going to be run away by Corey Davidson to Mon Louis. Now Joe Martin. The fleet attacking in numbers, but Braintree defending in, in depth. Joe Martin. Oh, and Alfie Egan didn't spot it, but Joe Martin almost ran all the way through, beat about six players en route. Tanner, beautiful ball out to the left wing to Cundall. Cundall has got Akinwandi in front of him, but a good ball to the far stick. Once again, no red shirts coming in, and it's gone for a fleet throw. Everybody in a green shirt back in the final third. Bingham. Bingham with a shot, parried by the goalkeeper, but Cundall is too late to come in and convert, and the ball is cleared away from the Braintree defence. And it is Kieran Juan Louis off. Good and to see Kieran back in the, in, the, in the mix of things. You know, he's had a tough, um, he had a tough pre-season where he missed a lot of football and a lot of training. Tanner to Bingham, Bingham, oh, slide rule ball through to Polyon. Polyon, he's pulled down, surely. The referee waves it away. Looked like a great tackle, I think, in the end. And the ball scooped up to Polyon. He tried to trap it on the penalty oh, spot but the ball ran away from him. Let him down there again he runs from deep from Dom running inside the, uh, the, the, the right back. Inside to Cundall, Cundall's in the area. Martin, oh Alfie Egan, oh takes a shot there are bodies in front of him. This ball's cleared away the six yard area is going to go for a corner that's better the pressure was building. Braintree absolutely throwing everything they've got in front of the shots coming. Chapman in acres of space. All the green shirts in the final third. The fleet are going to have to do it. Egan! Egan shoots over the bar! That should have been in the back of the net. Unlike In terms of getting forward, Cundall gets back. Derry heads on to Akinwandi. This could be a chance for Akinwandi, but oh, brilliant defensive play. Ebsley keeping the ball at bay and eventually the shot over by Johnson. The ball comes in, it's low, Cundall gets a touch. He goes down, it's a penalty! A penalty, or a penalty, mate. Well, we never thought a penalty would happen, but... No, uh, it, was a, it was a bit of a strange ball from Craig Tanner that was kind of hip height. It wasn't a very good corner, was it? It wasn't very well struck. Oh, was it? it was a one. I think the way that... Oh, Here he goes. goes. Rakesh Bingham. Yes, he puts the ball in the back of the net. Rakesh Bingham, he scored three at Braintree on the opening day of last season in Dennis Kutrieb's first league game in charge, and he's put the fleet in front tonight. 73 minutes gone. Rakesh Bingham makes it. Ebsleet United one. Here's Critchlow. Critchlow. Riggles. Gets the ball only as far as Bingham. Bingham to Polyon. Polyon outside left. He's got nobody in the middle. Cundall's trying to get there, but Pollyon's going to have to do it on his own. Pollyon, left foot. Pollyon makes it 2-0. 83 minutes. Dominic Pollyon. Nothing short of what we deserved. And I think credit there has to go to Rakesh Bingham in the left wing back position. Won the ball back and slid, at first of all, an early pass in behind for Dominic Polion, running on the left-hand side, went one way to the right, jinked to the left, and fired with his left foot into the bottom corner. 83 minutes on the clock, and it's absolutely it's really a Before anybody else. He's, and, you know, we, we complimented him last week at... Um, oh, and here's Polion, Polion, back behind the defence. Polion! Three bounces, and it goes beyond the post. I can't believe he's, he's, he's think that wide. I the tell you, that he's in. That was so good. We had Will Wood, Fresh Chris Niggy, uh, and we had uh, Christian and Gesson on their feet. They thought it was in. Now Cundall. Surely, yes, Joe, Joe Martin's the option. <coughs> oh, Alfie Egan, a back heel into the path of Martin. Martin! Oh, he parries it out, and it runs safely away to... Uh, Corey Davidson, seconds to go. 
Yeah, yeah Marcus uh, Johnson Schuster. Two v two in the box, but Seth has stood up. There it is. There's the whistle. The fleet have done it. Brilliant. They've pulled off another win, and uh, that one takes them to third in the table. They're now four points behind. Four points behind leaders Dartford with uh, no games in hand. It looks like Maidstone are going to draw this evening, so they leapfrog over them, and they're behind St Albans and Dartford. Adam Mecky, sum up what you've seen this evening. Again, a very frustrating evening at times. Uh, chances at both ends, but Epsfleet carried on knocking at the door, stayed true to, to the, the philosophy and, uh, and believed that a goal would come. And maybe a slit had fortunate with the, the penalty, but again, um, it's uh, a, a, well, a win well deserved from Epsfleet.